start with the topic of treatment of fracture. Initially, th I thought that this topic will be covered in one lecture. But as I'm making this video and as I'm preparing for the lectures, it appears that this topic will be covered in three parts, three lectures. The first one is the treatment of closed fracture. Then the second one is the treatment of open fracture and then modernization in the treatment of fracture. So this is the first video of treatment of fracture. First of all, if you are new to my channel, please subscribe to my channel and hit that notification button so you get notified every time I post a new video. I am posting the video series of orthopedics, so stay tuned for the whole orthopedic series. Also, I am repeating this in all of my videos that if you feel my videos are slow, if you feel my videos are slow, please go in the settings above. Tap on the playback speed button and increase the speed of my video so you get the rapid revision of all the orthopedics topic I covered till right till now. Now, what topic I am covering in this lecture? In this lecture, I am covering the general principle for the management of closed fracture. First of all, the general principle for management of fracture and in that the closed fracture. Whenever a patient of fracture comes or whenever a person suffers from fracture, you do the treatment or the management in phases. Not all of us are like, yeah, there is a fracture patient, come on, just go on him. No, no, no. You do with phases. The first one is the emergency care. The phase one is emergency care. Then phase two is definitive care. And the third one is the rehabilitation. So we are going to see all of these phases in detail one by one. Let us first talk about the emergency phase, phase 1. This phase starts where the fracture occurs. As soon as the fracture occurs, the emergency care phase should be, start, should be started. And the principle for this is, you can see in the image, it's rice. What is rice? First of all, let us enumerate the principles and then we are going to see each of this in detail. The first one is R for R for rest or by splinting you give rest to the part. Then I for the I for the ice therapy, C for the compression and E for the elevation. All these three is done to reduce the swelling of the affected part. And this is to provide support to the affected part. Okay, so these are the principles. Let us first talk about the splint. Splint means in this we are going to support the affected part. So before splinting, you need to remove all the bangles, rings or bra bracelets, anklets, watch worn by the patient. Because if you don't remove and this part and the affected part continues to swell, these will stop the blood supply of the further part. So you need to remove rings, bangles, bracelets, watch, anything which are over the affected part. After that, you are going to provide, put the splint on the patient as per the things, from, by the things and as per the image. You can use the folded newspaper, foot ruler, pillow, wooden plank, bamboo, even umbrella or you can make slings out of the clothes. Before putting the split, um, these splint, first of all see for the gross deformities. If by applying a simple traction or a pressure over the gross deformities, get if it get corrected, then correct that gross deformities, put the splint. And after putting the splint, check for the distal pulsation, whether the blood supply is intact or not, whether there is any compression or any internal bleeding, which that because of which you get a feeble blood pulsation. So check for the blood supply. When you have done with it, checking for pulsation, you are going to assess the nerve quickly. So you must be like how we assess the nerve at the spot of the accident or, or where the fracture occurred. The affect, take a small pinch over the affected area and if the patient reacts, the nerves are intact. If the patient withdraws his or her limb or the part or reacts to it, then the nerve cells are nerve fibers are intact and if it's not it's time to rush the hospital as soon as possible okay now then what are the advantages of applying this plate first of all it relieves the pain since the fracture end are not 
rubbing on each other and not hurting the surrounding tissue, the nerves are not getting excited and you are not getting any pain. Pain. It further prevents the it prevents the further damage. If the two fracture vents are open, it will wear and tear the surrounding soft tissue and neurovascular bundle. So it will prevent the further damage. And because of those fracture end, there can be the chances of fat embolism because a small piece of fat can enter in the blood supply. So it will it will increase it will decrease the chances of fat embolism and also the hypovolemic stroke. If the blood if the vascular bundle is affected or uh, injured, there will be tremendous blood supply and the patient will log blend up into hypovolemic shock. So it is prevented by applying splint. Also, it the apply, by applying speed, splint, the transportation is made easy. Transportation is made easy. So what is it? It relieves the pain, it prevents further damage, it prevents the complication of fracture like fat embolism and hypovolume shock and transportation is made easy. Now the next therapy is the ice therapy. Apply the ice or cold thing on the affected part. So what you are going to do, you are going to take the crushed ice, put it in the polythene bag, wrap it, in the, wrap it in with the wet cloth and put it on the affected area. There can be there are also commercial commercial ice packs you can use that as well what it will do it will reduce the swelling and infl inflammation also the pain that is the compression the, in compression in compression we are going to apply the crepe bandage on the affected part but make sure your crepe bandage is not too tight because of that there can be the cessation of blood supply and you can create the complications in the fracture so apply the crepe bandage it is which is not too tight right and the last one is the elevation see in this image here this is the level of person's heart like this right so the foot is above this is the foot elevated the foot is above the level of the heart so elevate the affected part above the level of heart this will reduce the splaining, uh, swelling. You can use anything, bricks, pillows, in this case they have used suitcase, anything which will help, which is rigid and which will keep the limb in its part. So this is the elevation. Now after this, when the patient is transported to the emergency department, you are not directly going to hit on his leg. His leg is fractured. Let us first treat the leg, fractured leg. No. There are the steps. And you need to follow that steps. The first one is we are going to give the basic life support. Check for the shock. If the patient is shocked, if the vitals are low, the BP is low, there is feeble pulses, start the fluid therapy as soon as possible. Then you are going to do the quick evaluation of external injuries. Are you able to see any bleeding spots or any injuries which can cause... The further worsening of the patient, control that. Then you are going to give the particular attention to the head, chest and abdominal injuries. And do not forget to check the back. What happens when a patient comes to you, in panic you, go, you see that what is in front of you is all good. But still you lose the patient because you fail to, fail to examine the back. There can be any gross injury in the back which is giving constant through which there is constant blood loss and you lost the patient. So do not forget to check for the back injuries. So you're going to do head, chest, abdomen and the back injuries. Give particular attention to these. Then you're going to see for the local bleeding and going to stop by compression. And you're going to see whether there is any nerve and vessel injury or not. After these things, see you must be thinking that you are going to check all of these step by step. No. All this thing happens simultaneously, all at one point. One person check for the vitals, one person check for the injuries, one person do um, see whether the if if the person is in shock, he, he is going to start the fluid therapy. All of this are done when the person is stabilized. Then you are going to give the orthopedic care to the person. You are going to put the splint. You are going to put the give the IV analgesic, but. Keep one thing in mind, whenever there is a head injury, you are not going to use the narcotic analgesic, okay? So you are going to give the splint, you are going to give the analgesic, you are going to avoid narcotic analgesic in head injuries and then you are going to give the broad spectrum, spectrum antibiotics. 
after all this and when the patient is stabilized then you are going to go for the radiological imaging and going to give the orthopedic care from here onwards this, there starts the definitive care the phase 2